Hey, welcome to the Smarter Tech Podcast. I am back with R Blank talking about EMF shielding solutions and solutions that really work. R, thank you so much for being here today again. Thank you for having me back. It's uh, I'm really enjoying this. Awesome. Well, if you did not listen to part one, you're missing out. We talked about what is EMF shielding? What is EMF protection? And uh, of all the products out there, which one work? And especially we dove in, into cell phone solutions. But when you're protected when it comes to your cell phone and maybe you carry it occasionally in a pocket and we talked about the kind of shielding that R recommends uh, with his company, Shield Your Body, then there's a second layer to the cell phone problem that I've, I keep hearing about. Some people told me it's not an issue. Some people told me it's a big issue. And I'm talking about the fact that when you talk on a phone, the cell phone signal may travel up the wire when you use these wired headsets. Is this an issue that you have measured and how much of an issue does this represent really? Okay, so that is a great question. And as a starting point, I would say that any wired headset, just a regular old wired headset is so much safer than holding a phone up to your head. So mm -hmm. I never want to discourage people from using wired headsets because they are just so much safer than the alternative. And if, if you only have a wired headset, use the wired headset. Do not use a Bluetooth headset for a whole bunch of other reasons um, that we can you know, talk about later if you want. But a, wire, a traditional wired headset is super uh, safer than just holding a phone up to your head. But that said, uh, as you pointed out, uh, traditional wired headsets are made with wire, and that means they are, can conduct EMF, and they do conduct EMF. And when they conduct EMF, they're conducting it up the wire and into your ear canal, which is proximal to your brain. Uh, so there is a little bit of this radiation. Now, how bad of an issue is it? I mean, in terms of health effects, I don't believe that's ever been uh, studied in, in yeah. a kind of uh, you know uh, controlled environment. I personally, you know. I don't believe it is one of the big concerns. You know, certainly when you compare it to using, uh, carrying your phone in your pocket or holding a phone up to your head or Bluetooth headsets uh, or those types of big concerns, I don't think it ranks up there. But if you are trying to eliminate as much EMF as possible, then you might be interested in anti-radiation headsets. Now you ask if uh, I have measured it. I have not um, because this type of radiation um, in this particular context, right? It's basically not discernible with home grade meters because the, the radiation from the phone is, even when the phone is a couple of feet away, is so powerful, it overwhelms the amount uh, that you would measure off of the, the headset itself. That said, um, I know you have somewhere on your desk there, you have a, the hard, the headset anti-radiation device. Yes, that was lab tested. And in that lab test, it did measure the, um, the EMF from, from the headset with the hard and without. But that was in a, you know, that was with laboratory grade equipment. It also involved a Faraday box uh, to prevent the, the cell phone's radiation itself from interfering with the test. And so we do have a lab test that does take into account um, normal kind of uh, the, the, the level of radiation that would normally be conducted over wired headsets. But no, myself, I have, I have never, I've never measured that. Gotcha. But the, re the, the problem was explained to me, or let's say the individuals that told me they feel a difference is those who unfor unfortunately or fortunately, depending on, on your angle on this, are electro hypersensitive. So they feel a difference, they probably feel better when they have uh, these air tube headsets. And and mm -hmm. this is what I, I've been seeing as a solution to that problem. And, and maybe you can explain what they are. And I think you also hold these. So what is the yep. difference? Um, second question built in. Um, what is the difference between a hair tube headset and then this hard extension where you plug your, your headset in and then this part in your phone or computer? Great question. So an air tube is, well, the name says it, right? It's a, it's a tube of air. So whereas traditional headsets conduct the sound using wire, 
from your phone in, into the speaker in your ear um, with air tubes at some point along the, the cable, depend, you know, different models work differently. Uh, the sound, so the sound is converted from wire to air earlier in the, so it's not up in your ear, it's further down somewhere on the tube. And then from there, it's conducted through the hollow tube up into your ear. So, so you're using air to conduct the uh, sound instead of wire. And that's where it gets its name, air tube. They work really well because there's literally no wire there. Uh, in fact, it's, it's the only product I sell where I don't have lab testing on it because the product, if the product, you know, it's an air tube, there's no wire for it to actually conduct um, the radiation. And yeah. so you, you, you know that it, if you have a pair of air tubes, you know that it's working because there's, there's no wire there. Um, the downside with air tubes is that they just don't sound that good. Even the best sounding air tubes don't sound that good. So I use my air tubes um, for calls and for podcasts to listen to podcasts, but that's it. I'll, I'll never listen to music on air tubes. I, I hate the experience. It's worse than not listening to music. I won't even watch, you know, a video on air tubes or play a game with air tubes, anything. Uh, podcasts and, and uh, talking on, on the phone. So that's where the hard comes in. The hard was developed by this firm in the UK and it actually wasn't even developed as an EMF protection product. It was developed as a product to improve sound quality. So let mm. me explain how this works, right? Because we're, we're talking about how standard headsets um, conduct EMF radiation. Uh, and what that means is that's actually throwing interference into the sound signal. And so if you want to actually improve the sound quality of, of your headphones, you want to filter out that stray EMF. And so that's what the hard was developed to do, was to filter out the stray EMF to improve the sound quality. Um, but by doing that, they filtered out the EMF. And so they solved actually two problems at once. They, they uh, prevented the stray EMF from running up the headset and they actually improved the sound quality. And the improved sound quality um, is actually proof that it is working for you. Uh, and it, it, um, it solves the biggest drawback of the air tubes, which is that they don't sound very good. So uh, the way that the hard works is the wire that, that conducts the sound, it runs through this bath of dielectric gel. The dielectric gel absorbs that straight EMF and converts it into heat. Uh, but it's a very, I mean, this is, these are very low levels of EMF, so it's a very small amount of heat. And so it does, it's not like the product gets hot. Um, but it, it, it absorbs the, the EMF. And, and by the way, this is a, that, that is another one of these technologies that is uh, well-established. In addition to EMF shielding, there's EMF absorbing materials. And the mm -hmm. way they work is by absorbing EMF and converting them into heat. And so that's what this dielectric gel does. The sound comes out the other side with filtered out the, the straight EMF. Gotcha. Well, that's a very nice solution. And something that people have expressed to me towards these air tube headset a concern if you will is um sometimes you have the hair, air tubes here but here around the heart area you have the well the signal goes up to there so is that shielded and how is yours designed i'm not i'm not familiar with your product in particular it is not shielded and you are i mean you're correct um so the uh i mean that's that's no different than having a standard headset go uh, but yeah so from there be so until until so i i i should have I, I i never remember to bring my products to my desk when i'm having these interviews <laughs> no i worries. apologize but i would show you until there's a bead on the air tube i mean it looks like a bead it's it, it, it's it's actually a device but it looks like a bead so until the wire gets to the bead it works like a regular headset and then at the bead that's where it's converted to air and from there on, the EMF is not conducted. So yeah. whoever was giving you that feedback is absolutely correct. It, it's okay. not more EMF than they would have on a wired headset, um, but it, it, it does conduct EMF up until the point at which it's converted to air. Now, okay. why not make the whole thing out of air? Well, because then the sound would be even worse. And oh, so okay. it's this balance between how far away from your head you want the, the air tubing to extend versus uh, how, how bad the sound 
sounds. <laughs> so. Gotcha. Well, I, I can tell you, and, and people can purchase air tubes. I think they still have uh, a validity in certain situations. I'm not a fan, and I could not find air tubes that also were comfortable in the ear. I don't know. It, I have mm -hmm. a weird shape in my ear. I always have a hard time. And these Bose uh, wired headsets were really my favorite. And uh, the, this also a noise canceling option, especially when I'm on airplanes or the subway train here in Montreal sounds so la so noisy, like in Paris or certain other cities. And then you go to Japan and it's kind of a whisper and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, anyway, I, and I have a sensitive ear, like my hearing isn't so good and I'm trying to protect it. So this thing, when I saw it and Brian Hoyer, my colleague who's uh, at Shielded Healing, uh, told me, Nick, you got to check this out. It, it's kind of creating, as you said, on your website, turn any wired headset into a, an air tube headset. I'm like, oh, bingo. This is a solution I've been working, <laughs> I, I've been yearning for, for years. So, I mean, now I use it. I use it on my computer. I use it in all situations. And um, even if the computer is just plugged into the wall, my thinking is, well, there's dirty electricity going out the wires on the keyboard that the entire thing is made out of metal. So why not? I mean, I just install it yeah, and I, forget about it. So I don't know if you can see. I have I have it plugged into my uh, the headset that I use with my Yeti all the time. Oh, there you I, go. I use it. I use it the same way for my computer. Yeah, exactly. And uh, do you remember what was the retail price on this? It's it's fairly low, I right? Think it's, it's very affordable. Thirty nine dollars. Okay, well, I mean, if you're listening to this, oh, it's after the holidays, but still, I mean, purchase one as a, as a Christmas gift or, I don't know, birthday <laughs> gift, I guess, yeah. if it's, this is an, in January, unfortunately, but I mean, anytime, it's, it's, it's very reasonable, especially if it's, I mean, it's something that, uh, first it's sturdy, and I like this, because the, the, the little Apple uh, earbuds, the regular wired ones are so thin. I break them in six months just when I listen to podcasts and I, I don't know what I do incorrectly, but my wife is always coming back at me like, Nick, you break these headphones after four months. What do you do? And I don't know, maybe <laughs> I, I, I walk around and it kind of puts pressure on them, but I hate the little wires. This thing is sturdy. So when I walk around with it, I know it's going to last. So this is something I... It looks sturdy, and I, I know it's going to last years, but it's really a technology that doesn't really expire, right, Un unless right. it breaks. Right? Yeah, so and th I think it's a good opportunity to point out that we offer a lifetime warranty on every order. So even if really? it breaks five or six years from now, we will honor that warranty. Jeez. Okay, well, <laughs> oh my God. that's So that's right there. You've got, <laughs> you heard it from the <laughs> horse's mouth. My God. Well... That's a very impressive. So there's, I mean, there's just uh, Le Creuset from like the, these big like French pots like to do like pot rows and whatnot that offer these kind of warranties. And I'm like, okay, how do they make money? So props to you for offering lifetime warranty. It's very impressive. And I, I can also vouch for your customer support. I, I, I ordered those and then uh, my invoice... I, I had a technicality with my invoice. I need to see the tax numbers on there. I emailed your customer support and they sent me that in like 24 hours. And I was like, wow, so very responsive as well. And that's something I also appreciate from any company that I purchase for, like, are they reachable for real? And some of them, unfortunately, they fail and it takes two weeks and I say, okay, well... I will not necessarily purchase again from that company. And your, yours was really the opposite. For me, it was a very good experience, kind of not even not even trying to uh, to go directly to you or anything like that, just the customer support. And I, I was served very rapidly. So I appreciated that. And then um, lifetime warranty. I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, Thank so this you. Is, Thank you for I, all of that. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I, and I mean, it's, it's really Brian um, put... Brian told me, uh, Brian Hoyer told me, you got to check out R Blank from Shield Your Body. In, in, in Brian's opinion, it was the only company that um, he, he found the marketing to be clean and the education to be exactly aligned with what we teach in our course, for example. So this is why I was really feeling uh, enticed to, to talk to you today. And I want to close out this interview. I know there are so many other products I would have love to talk with and maybe in a future conversation if if uh if uh you can come back to the podcast eventually like tap uh, like tablet solutions and maybe shielding clothing and whatnot but i want to focus on a special project that really i i did not expect really um your your company to get involved with but you've created an app 
can you talk about what this app is for? What's the name? And I think it's something very exciting that has been missing from the market for years. Cool. Thank you. So um, that was a great intro. So yeah, the, the app, and, and just so everyone knows, it's a browser app. So it, we call it an app because it is an application, but you use it in a browser. So you can use it Perfect. On, a, on a hardwired Ethernet computer, just like you can on a phone. You just click the link. It's shieldyourbody.com slash FX. And it's called the SYB EMF Health Effects app. And the idea here, right, is um, people like me and you are big advocates for, for people to learn how to test. You, you get a decent meter and you start testing because until you do that, you really don't know how much EMF you're exposed to or where yeah. the surprising sources may be. And the only way you can know that is with a meter and by learning how to test. Um, but the, the units are really, really confusing. Odds are, you know, you've never encountered them before in your life. You certainly didn't study them in school. Um, you have no basis to understand what these units mean. And there's all sorts of different ones, right? The different, different meters use different units, different fields are measured with different units. And so you can compare it to like a, a, a list of guidelines that you might get from, you know, uh, the Building Biology Institute or some other source like that and say, oh, well, that's really high or that's not as high. But beyond that, it's very hard for regular people to understand uh, what these units mean. At the same time, you know, people like you and me keep going around saying the science is very clear. There's thousands of studies on this, but you know, what are those studies? And and I felt, uh, and I felt this for a long time actually. That this the, the the idea for what became this app actually came before the idea for SYB. So this the idea for this app actually started in in like 2012 when I was writing wow. Overpowered with my father. The idea is to, to connect what people see in, an app, uh, in their meter to the science. And so what the app does is you can just enter in any reading that you would get off of your meter, and it will show you a list of uh, scientific studies that show health effects at or below that reading. And then it'll give you additional details about each of those studies. Uh, we we don't just show you the abstract. We've actually parsed out the abstract. So it'll show you the level of EMF, how long the exposure was, what was the problem the researchers were studying, what were their conclusions, and then you can link out to the full abstract if you would like to. Uh, right now, we have about a thousand studies in the database. Uh, it takes time to parse these. These yeah. all came from um, the, uh, the, the, this, this, this initial batch, which we're still working on every week, we had more, uh, this initial batch all came from, um, the reports that were reviewed by Dr. Henry Lai as part of the bio initiative report, uh, first in, I believe 2008, and then the second edition in 2012. So these are all, uh, vetted, uh, high quality, um, uh, peer reviewed studies. Uh, that are are included in the analysis to, uh, presented by the Bio Initiative Report, which, if your listeners don't know, is at bioinitiative.org, um, which is a um, it is a it, it's it's a report. It was published twice, like I said, by a group of international researchers, which included uh, my father as well as others like Dr. Henry Lai, and they uh, surveyed thousands of studies um, to to sh to to sort of summarize what the science was actually saying about the health effects of EMF. Um, we do have more to go, uh, but the thing is, is we can't actually include every study in this app because the app, uh, the study needs to report a specific exposure. If a study talks about, you know, they used a cell phone for five minutes or 10 minutes or three hours, you know, that's not a specific exposure. We can't actually link that to a specific reading from a meter. So yeah. we're only including studies that show um, that, that, that show results from specific exposure levels. And that's how, that's the connection that makes this work. And, you know, I think it surprises people when they use the app to see even really, really low levels that you would get, you're nowhere near a phone, your Wi-Fi is off, you know, maybe there's power running through your walls or something. I mean, there's some sources, but they're not these huge sources right next to you. You take a reading, you type it into the app and you're still seeing negative health effects. Uh, being reported at those levels. And so that's kind of the missing link that this app fills. I, like I said, I had this idea nine years ago 
Um, and it, we finally released it this year. And uh, it's kind of amazing to me that in the, the intervening nine years, no one kind of jumped in and did it before me. <laughs> because to me, it's such an obvious gap in, um, in, the, in the presentation of information uh, for, for, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, it's for the level of consumer who would go out and buy a meter, but for that level of consumer, you know, how do you relate the science to what they're seeing? And how do you make the science more accessible, more meaningful, more, uh, more understandable? And this is, this is why we created the app. And as I say, we're continually adding to the data. Uh, every week we update the database and hopefully in, um, later in 2022, we'll actually be able to engineer some more features. This is great, and I, I think the app can, I mean, it can, it can do two things. It can uh, educate people and say, my God, there are still studies that, that have found effects at these levels. It can also be discouraging, so I guess you, you got to use it with, <laughs> with, with also the mindset that minimizing exposure is a much more realistic goal than eliminating <laughs> Exposure, especially if you live right outside this window in Montreal, I'm not in a good spot. I mean, the average here could be 0.2 volts per meter, like 100 microwatts per square meter. And for people who don't understand the units, well, it's it's not good as an ambient level. It's fairly high. In Vegas, I could measure 0.5 volts per meter ambient uh, just from the towers uh, in my hotel room, um, a little bit outside Las Vegas in, in, a, in a conference center. It mm -hmm. was bad, and I did not feel good. And many people in that conference were electrosensitive and feeling oh, very buzzed. But what can you do? I mean, in the end, you it's 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 informative, and don't don't let the the information in the app or other things you you read detract you from doing your best to minimize. So, I guess it also needs to be used in, in a context. But at least it can be ammunition for. Um, for advocates, I would I would tend to think also that uh, I mean they they go to a certain place, they look at the levels, and they say, guys, this is linked in scientific studies with a reduction of sperm count or this and that and uh, increase in cortisol, and look at the studies, and it's right there. So it's it, it's good that at least you you, you give all the bioinitiative report or, or, or part of it uh, available in a. In, in an instantaneous way, depending on, on the level. So I think it's, it's, it's very useful. Um, who, who is using that app exactly? Is it, is it more, more for advocates, for everyday people, lay people? Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't require logins or anything like that. So anyone can it's use it. So I don't know for, exactly. To everyone. Yeah. To everyone. So I don't know okay. exactly who's using it. Um, I, I know that um, on my mailing list, several just regular consumers thought it was really cool. We have some comments because we did a launch webinar for it. Um, got very good feedback. A few building biologists have given me very good feedback on it. Mm. And then a few high level academics um, have given me, not only given me positive feedback on it, they've shared it with their lists. There's one up in Canada who's uh, told me he's integrating it into his curriculum um, at university. So we're, we're seeing responses. It, it, to me, it was an app for average consumers. Um, not average, uh, the average consumer who would buy a meter, let's sit, put it yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but we're seeing a res uh, response to it, you know, from all kinds of levels of people involved in, in advocacy and education. This is great. And uh, is, is it free of charge or is it? Yeah, totally uh, free. And it's, it's oh always going to be free. So, well, yeah. <laughs> that's a great service you've done for, for the cause, for humanity, for education. And, uh, Probably a lot of money invested out of your own pocket, so I salute you for that. I try to donate myself based on my projects and whatnot, and I, I know this is a more of a passion project to put that together, and then thousands of studies. I don't know how many thousands of hours it must have taken. So, um, well, props to you. It's it's really important, and I will keep sending people towards that project. Uh, and your company, it just shows that again. I think. When you when you you vet people that are uh, for profit, I think that conscious capitalism needs to include a few things. One of them is proper claims that are realistic and and ethical, and you, you pass the sniff test a hundred percent. And then also giving back. Uh, you there are so many webinars that I keep I keep seeing the information you put out. It's always <laughs> educational, and I mean you don't have to do that as a 
EMF protection company, if you will. So you go way beyond uh, your mandate or your the usual company that is there to sell products and you educate people. So uh, please um, let, let people know what do you have as far as education goes, what they can expect and where they can find you because... Uh, I, I, I really, really am excited uh, for people to learn from you and in, in, in everything you've got going on. Wow, thank you. Uh, that was really kind and I appreciate sure. it. Uh, everything is centered at shieldyourbody.com. Uh, so there we have a ton of articles on our blog. We have hun literally hundreds, very easily searchable. Um, so you can just type in any term you want. You, um, you'll, odds are you'll find at least one article about it. Um, also on the on the website, you'll see our archive of webinars. Um, so we've we try to run them every month. We don't quite get to it every month, but we try to run them every month on some type of topic uh, related to uh, concerns of EMF and health. Um, in fact, the, the one we just ran um, as we're recording this, it's just before Christmas. So the one we just ran was a low tech holiday guide. So it was a guide to having people celebrate um, holidays this year with low tech. Um, if you on the site, you can also join my mailing list. That's where you will get the invites to the webinars when they happen. Um, uh, we also have the Healthier Tech podcast, which uh, right now we're just starting the recordings for season two. And that is, uh, you know, some of our subjects are similar to the ones you cover. Uh, others go, are a little different, but it's all about, you know, in the same vein as, as, as you, it's all about establishing a healthier relationship with modern technology. And um, you can learn more about the podcast there. And then the final resource that I would highlight for people is our YouTube channel. I mean, we're on all the social platforms, but I think our YouTube channel has a lot of great info because it not only has our webinar archives, uh, but we have a whole bunch of videos on different uh, topics within EMF education. And that's at youtube.com slash shield your body. Perfect. Well, I'm going to link all of this in the show notes. Uh, R, it's been an honor uh, and, a, and a privilege to talk to you. And uh, I feel like we're really, really aligned when it comes to our values. And I appreciate everything you do. And uh, I can't wait to see the feedback we have on this two-part uh, interview here for this new season of Smart Tech. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure and I really appreciate it. Thank you.